When you are accustomed to seeing chain-link fences, asphalt shingles and wood siding, it can be easy to think our modern materials are just better than what builders used in the past. But that couldn't be further from the truth, before plywood sheathing and vinyl siding. Medieval builders had developed some ingenious techniques that made their homes not just livable, but downright beautiful. And the crazy thing is, they built them to last. In fact, many of these homes outlived their empires and stood strong against the test of time, which is why we were gonna now take a look at how builders of old made their homes to last. Welcome to this house. First off, let's talk about the materials because builders didn't have fancy power tools or advanced materials, so they used what they had at hand. They used local stone, wood, clay and straw. Now, depending on where they were building, they might have had access to limestone, granite or sandstone, they also had access to plenty of timber, especially oak, which was dense, very durable, and naturally insect resistant. They also figured out that mud mixed with straw, animal hair or manure made for a great natural insulation and very breathable walls. Now, when it came to putting up timber structures, builders developed a technique called mortise and tenon joints which allowed them to perfectly fit pieces of wood together without needing any metal fasteners. The only problem was, is that wooden pegs could loosen over time, but they solved that problem by leaving the pegs slightly oversized. As the wood dried, it would swell and bind the joint, creating a strong connection that could withstand lateral movement. In fact, this gave the structure some flexibility, allowing it to bend and sway during storms and survive ground movement which was a genius solution to a very old problem. But other builders specialized in stone walls. Now, stone walls were incredibly thick, sometimes up to two feet, which sounds like a lot, but they were necessary to keep the structure fireproof. And like modern wood frame homes, stone was also an excellent material for walls because the stones were shaped to interlock with each other, reducing the need for mortar. But when they did use mortar, they used lime mortar. And lime mortar was a big improvement over sand and cement mortar because it could self-heal. See, rainwater would redeposit lime in the cracks, kind of like a built-in repair system. Now, regardless of what material they were using for the walls, most builders understood the importance of a good roof. Slate, clay tiles and thatch were all popular materials for roofing, which protected the home from the elements. Now, thatched roofs were thick very insulated, and sometimes layered with ash or seaweed to make them fire-resistant and keep pests out. And even though they might seem rudimentary, they were actually quite sophisticated. See, they were built in layers with each layer running perpendicular to the one below it, which created an incredibly strong bond. That meant that if a thatch roof was damaged, it was simple to just replace the individual rods. And speaking of thatch, the walls were often built using a technique called wattle and dub. This technique consisted of flexible rods or branches woven into a wall, then coated with a mixture of clay, straw and manure. Now, obviously it doesn't sound appealing to us today, but it made a lot of sense to medieval builders because it created a breathable, antibacterial wall that could be repaired easily by villagers using locally sourced materials. But Regardless of what technique they used, the key to their success was regular maintenance. Every year they would reapply lime washing to the walls and patch up any damage, which kept their houses looking beautiful and more importantly, pest and mold free. Repairs were also a community event. Villagers would come together to help families in need. And it was a great way to teach children the practical knowledge of building. It wasn't uncommon for a home to appreciate with age, not depreciate, Another thing that helped these homes stand the test of time was their foundation. Many of these homes featured raised stone footings, which protected the timber from flooding. They also dug trenches and filled them with rubble, which acted as a shock absorber for the inevitable frost and ground movement. Additionally, they made sure to direct water away from the structure by installing drainage systems and roof overhangs, so no matter how hard it rained, water was never a problem. Now. These medieval builders were also masters of design. Often the timber frame of the home carried the load of the roof, which meant the interior walls were free to roam. This gave homeowners the flexibility to move or replace interior walls as their needs changed, which was an incredibly smart way to build 
Homes could even expand over the course of several generations as families grew and changed. And some homes were actually designed to be disassembled and moved. This made the most of scarce building materials and ensured that no one was left behind when a family moved. Lastly, medieval builders were geniuses when it came to reusing materials. They would salvage wood from older structures and incorporate them into new construction, and the lime plaster they used on their walls actually got stronger over time. The lime reacted with the carbon dioxide in the air to harden the walls and also self-healed over time, which is why many medieval homes still stand today. So there you have it. Medieval builders developed many techniques that not only made their homes functional, but beautiful as well. Their ingenuity is truly amazing and it makes you wonder why we stopped using these techniques in the first place. Please subscribe for more stories of amazing homes and have a great day.